Welcome back to the Red Dice Diaries RPG podcast. I'm your host, John. It's hot as all hell here in the UK, as those of you who are watching on YouTube can probably tell from my freshly shaven dome. But I'm going to ignore the fact that I'm melting faster than a Madame Two Swords or waxwork. And I'm going to talk about an article that I recently reread in Knock issue three. Yeah, it's another one where I'm talking about something from Knock. What can I say? It's full of good stuff for your RPGs. And this article is entitled Picaro and the Story of D&D and was written by James Malazuski. Apologies if I've got your surname wrong, James. And I'm going to talk about that just after this music. <music> Okay, so this article has raised some good points that really hit home to the heart of some of the things I love about traditional or old school, if you want to call it that, D&D. So I'm going to talk about it a little bit now. And in this article, James is trying to get the thematic core of what he believes lies behind D&D. And he's talking about how the idea of the original D&D was that the player characters weren't these sort of Marvel-esque superheroes. They were these sort of 'er ne'er-do-wells, these vagabonds, these people who were often, I suppose, if you look at it in a way, quite ugly people, you know, only a, a few steps above the muck of the common rogues, if you will although probably Thieves is more like it. And James is talking about Picaro, or Picaresque fiction, which is the the sort of forerunner to pulp fantasy, as I understand it, although I'm no scholar of it, although I do have a copy of um, Helvetica, which is a a Picaresque fantasy role-playing game, and I hope to do a review of that at some point in the near future. And James lists out what he believes to be some of the common elements that sort of underscore the idea of pulp fantasy stories. And these are, the protagonists are rogues, generally of low station. Upper class society, or society in general, is pretty much corrupt. The protagonists pursue personal betterment rather than more noble pursuits, because they live in this corrupt society. Despite this, they sometimes achieve noble or at least broadly beneficial goals in pursuit of personal betterment. The world is generally humanocentric, with non-humans relegated to the margins, if they're there at all, and magic is at best unreliable and at worst downright dangerous, if not morally dubious. And in this article, James talks about how he believes that part of the the dissatisfaction that some people have with D&D nowadays is that over the course of the many editions and many years that have passed, D&D has tried to sort of move more away from that starting point around which the system was originally created. And James believes that part of people's dissatisfaction with D and D and so like you know the need to move on to all the games and stuff like that is that people are effectively trying to make the game into something that it's not and it never was intended to be. So therefore, the further you move away from the sort of spiritual core of D and D, I suppose you could call it, the more likely you are to get dissatisfied with it, and the more likely you are to see sort of cracks and things that aren't covered in the system showing as you try and sort of bend it and flex it to meet needs and desires that it was never originally intended to do. And I think this is a very valid point. After all, if you look at sort of BX D&D, where, you know, people... And I'm not going to bang on for ages about, you know, rolling 3D6 straight down the line and only having two hit points at first level and stuff like that. I've done that in other videos you know, that my preference is for the sort of down and dirty, sort of like low fantasy game, if you want to call it that. But I do firmly believe that if you look at BX D&D as opposed to 5th edition D&D, they're courting very different audiences. The player characters first level in 5th edition D&D 
are more like your sort of super heroic sort of high fantasy characters rather than your original BX like Rogue with his D6 hit points and a dagger who is barely a cut above the common man. He's got some nefarious schemes and a will to use his dagger to stick in someone's back. That's what he's got. He doesn't have a variety of different feats and strange superpowers that he can bring to achieve his aim. So he has to rely just on his innate cleverness and a bit of luck, which, as we know from old school games, can be unfortunately all too fleeting. And now I'm not going to bash 5th edition by saying, like, oh, you know, it's, it's terrible or anything like that, because loads of people get enjoyment out of it and fair play to them if they do. I do think, however, when you see sort of criticisms of the D&D systems, reading this article by James about uh, Picaro, the history of D&D, it does make me wonder how many of these criticisms are based in the fact that over the years the game has tried to change to appeal to whatever the, the current popular demographic is and the current popular styles of fantasy, but the actual rules themselves aside from 4th edition, haven't really changed that much. They're still built on the same basic chassis, and that's good in some ways. I mean, I've never been shy of saying that I'm a big fan of the OSR, precisely because there's so many different games that are based on that same D&D rule chassis that I can take little bits and sort of magpie bits and pieces from different OSR games and glom them all together into a game of my design and sort of make a sort of piecemeal system taking bits I like out of various different games. However, I do also think there's some negative points to sticking with the same sort of D&D rule chassis. The fact is that although the, the sort of game's premise and the sort of style of the game is trying to evolve with the times, the rule system's really aren't that much the basic chassis is still there a few things have been tweaked a load of stuff's been piled on the top now i'm not saying there haven't been a few sort of innovations here and there but by and large it's been softly softly catchy monkey basically and when they have tried to sort of step outside the realm of D&D to vastly alter the rule mechanics to appeal to a new demographic that which the last time they did that was fourth edition and that was obviously to appeal to the sort of online computer gamer sort of style person you know with sort of doing like the the world of warcraft sort of uh, mmorpgs and stuff like that and bringing some of those mechanics in when they tried to do that it really wasn't very popular at all because people were like oh it doesn't feel like the D D." I know or the D&D that I'm comfortable with and I think it's a bit of a shame that after that obviously the uh, the people in charge were like oh people people didn't like that uh, you know we, we, we best play it a bit safe with fifth edition and sort of well we'll keep a few little things that we can like slide under the radar from fourth edition but are oh, we gonna we're gonna mainly go back to like the tried and tested uh, D&D because people like that and they were right it was a very sensible business move because obviously people love that D D core chassis and people have been flocking to fifth edition in droves. Can't deny that. Can't fight the figures. But I do think it's a shame in a way because what they've sort of done is rather they took like one huge creative leap, got burned, and then pretty much went back to what they were doing before. And that, and ever since then it's just been like, well, let's change a bit here. Let's change a little bit there. Let's change a little bit there. Let's change a little bit there. Whereas I'd have liked to see them do something a bit more. And I think, to be honest, as I've been reading this article by uh, James in Knock 3, I think that what they'd probably really benefit for, from would be sitting down, looking at the sort of core demographic they're appealing to, what sort of games they want to play with the system, what sort of games they're already playing with the system and going all right okay well how can we make a set of rules that is going to let them play that sort of game better and more easily so if you if you look around and you're like oh everyone's playing high fantasy superpower heroic games with 
a million and one different random character races, species, whatever you want to call them. How can we make a more streamlined and easy to get into game that does that? That's what I'd like to see them do. And obviously the, the massive sort of heroic fantasy, million and one different species of like weird races isn't really my vibe, to be honest. I like a low fantasy setting with a largely humanocentric campaign. But I've accepted the fact that I'm not really the the target audience for the current edition of D&D. And that's fine. It's not like I'm, I've got any shortage of games to play. I just think it's odd and a little counterproductive when people are sort of expressing dissatisfaction with D&D but still sort of clinging to the old sort of D&D chassis rather than doing anything different with it. It's a bit like someone buying a horse and carriage and then pimping it up and then complaining because it's not a motor car. If you want something that can do 0 to 70 miles per hour down a motorway or more if you're being a bit risky then you need to go and get yourself a car it's no good like going oh, i'd love to do that but uh, i want this horse and carriage to do it because it's not going to happen that's not what the horse and carriage is made for and yeah i realize i'm sort of painting ourselves as a horse and carriage in this and that makes me sort of like an old v victorian era sort of uh uh grognard but you know whatever i can I can live with that. But yeah, I suppose what I'm trying to say in this slightly rambly sort of episode is that the article in Knock issue three really made me think about what I like about D&D. &D. And it is that sort of down and dirty, just half a rung above the common man, trying to pull yourself out of the muck by your bootstraps and your, your sheer cunning and tenacity sort of aspect that really appeals to me don't get me wrong the monsters are cool exploring dungeons is cool magic treasure all of that stuff is great but i started playing with warhammer fantasy role playing which is very much sort of a a warped and twisted version of europe in a sort of faux medieval setting very grim and sort of dirty then one of my favourite OSR settings is the Middlelands by Glenn Seal, Monkey Blood Design. And again, that's a sort of down and dirty Black Adder-esque, if I can put my teeth in, version of the British Isles. And I really love that. So it's no surprise that I vastly prefer that picaresque version of D&D, if you want to call it that. And I think that's why I've gravitated towards the older versions of D, D rather than the sort of like marvel-esque sort of newer versions of D, &D. And that's not to say i've not played D, D fifth edition i have and i've enjoyed it but it's not really my speed but as i say i'm not really the target demographic for the current edition of D, &D and i suspect i won't be for the future ones but that's fine as long as we've got the ogl and people producing old school stuff that's great however i would like to see the the future creators of future versions of DD just be a little bit more courageous and a little bit with their rules changes and stuff like that and a little bit more willing to acknowledge that if the games that people are playing have fundamentally changed then maybe they need to sort of push that envelope a bit further to deliver a game that's really sort of providing what their current target demographic wants so they are those are my thoughts on the recent article that i read picaro the story of dnd in knock issue three and also some of my thoughts about what i like about the older versions of dnd so what do you think do you like the down and dirty feeling of older dnd do you prefer the super heroic new version of dnd Either way, I'd love to hear from you. You can get in touch a number of different ways. You can drop us a voicemail message using SpeakPipe or Anchor, or you can send us an email to rddrpgpodcast at gmail.com. So until we see you again, take care, stay safe, and whatever you're playing, have fun. See you soon.